evening, everyone. Thanks for um, coming along. This is my first talk at Luxor Australia. Um, and yeah, as the title says, I'm going to uh, briefly talk about gRPC and the Elixir implementation um, uh, of gRPC. I'm, as Paul mentioned, I uh, work for Alembic. Uh, and as Sorry to interrupt you, Robin. Sorry yeah. to interrupt you. I normally wouldn't do this, but would you mind turning on your video? Okay, Is sure. Possible? Yeah, sure. Stand by. Cool, thank you. Feel free to continue one or start again. <laughs> yeah, no, no worries. Um, yeah, I um, uh, work uh, at Limbic now, but recently um, uh, left Telstra. And uh, we at Telstra, we did actually use uh, gRPC on a number of projects um, uh, in, in Elixir, and I'll go through them very briefly um, uh, as we go through the talk. So uh, let me get rid of that guy there. Um, so yes, uh, as the um, um, uh, uh, as was mentioned in the intro, gRPC, high performance, open source, universal RPC framework, um, designed uh, by Google for inter-service communication, but also uh, so as in microservices, etc. But it's also applicable in. Uh, last mile communications to uh, you know, mobile devices and browsers. That's a bit newer and less mature, but it is there. Um, gRPC works with any language It's because it's built on top of HTTP2 and, and protobuf. So any, uh, any, any languages that can provide a H2 server and can um, do stuff with protobuf can play. Um, and gRPC is um, used in the sort of the landscape that is um, occupied by um, REST APIs or GraphQL message buses like maybe Kafka, et cetera, although not necessarily replacing any of them. Um, and also um, in, in certain niche cases, um, for instance, like SNMP, and I'll talk about that particular case um, in a little bit too. And um, so there is a um, unofficial um, but reasonably mature um, library for Elixir that, that is built on top of the 9.9 software gun for the client side and Cowboy for the server side. Um, and um, that's the, uh, the library that, um, that uh, we use at Telstra and um, uh, that I'll be um, using in the demo later on. Um, so yeah, I'll just go through what gRPC is in a bit more detail, some of the use cases, and then we'll get onto the, um, the demo. Um, so <clears throat> um, yeah, gRPC, of course, RPC framework, um, it's high performance because as mentioned, it's built on top of H2 um, and it uses um, protocol buffers for the, its interface description language and wire format. Um, and um, yeah, because of that, it's also it's also multi language. Um, so yeah, there is some. Uh, 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 we will go through what um, very very briefly um, the aspects of um, H two and um, and protobuf that relate, just in case anyone doesn't re fully grok what they uh, what they are. Um, at a high level, just stealing off the gRPC um, uh, website. Um, is uh, a high, here's a high level diagram of how it works. You've got client servers. It's a you know, RPC a remote procedure call um, framework. So it's yeah, request response. Um, on the right here, we've got some clients in different languages that um, you know, uh, request um, make an RPC call um, by with a, a protobuf. Um, payload. Um, and then there's a, a server that um, responds to them. Um, <clears throat> And as it alludes to here, um, the clients and servers can all be in different languages. Um, oh, and that's a good po uh, point to um, mention that uh, unlike promised, uh, I won't really be uh, looking at any 
we won't be looking at any code written in other languages. It's all going to be Elixir tonight. Um, yeah, just in terms of uh, 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 time um, that, that I've had to prepare this talk, um, I intend to um, expand it um, at a later stage. So I can either, either you know, give the talk again or <clears throat> redistribute the slides, the expanded slides at some point. Um, but yeah, sorry about that. But um, there's, uh, there should be enough good stuff um, uh, even so. So gRPC uses H2. Um, there are some features there that, um, that uh, in H2 that are quite uh, attractive and um, uh, give it that high performance capability. Um, H2 is binary, whereas previous versions of the, the protocol are, um, uh, yeah, are text-based. Um, it allows for higher compression. There's uh, two-way streaming in um, H2 and connection multiplexing. Um, there are some uh, uh, other advantages which um, are limited like head of line blocking. Um, uh, it has been eliminated at certain levels, but um, because it still uses single TCP connection, it hasn't been fully eliminated. And I think the version three, of H, um, HTTP, they're looking to resolve that. Um, and yeah, this two-way streaming part, one thing that's not clear here um, is that this is um, uh, gRPC not only has sort of request response, but it also allows um, uh, data to be streamed back and forward between the client and the server. Um, so yeah, as mentioned, it uses uh, protocol buffers both as the interface description language, um, which gives it a strong contract, allows um, a, a codec, encoder, decoder, or serial, serializer, deserializer. Um, in most languages that I've seen to be uh, you know, generated um, uh, automatically from that, um, from the, uh, the protobuf, um, which, yeah, uh, reduces you know, boilerplate code. Um, and pro protocol buffers are a compact binary wire format. And I'll show some examples of protocol buffers so we can um, yeah, see how that works. So yeah, here's a very, very uh, basic protobuf uh, fragment. Um, here we're defining a message called person. It's got some, uh, some fields in it. There's, um, it's, it's strongly typed. There's a whole range of all the you know, regular kind of types from you know, C kind of uh, land that you'd be, um, uh, you'd be you, you would expect. Um, and these numbers here are field numbers. Um, and so um, I, uh, w while I wouldn't be able to give a 100% a, a, a accurate description of how they work, the idea is that um, uh, the field numbers are used to um, uh, compress um, the the on, the on disk or on wire um, uh, structure of this message down to um, the bare essential. So yeah, name, ID, etc. cetera, um, as Pony Copter are not actually um, uh, listed in the, um, it, in the, you can't find those, stri those strings or those identifiers in the, in the actual binary format, but name is always first, ID is second, et cetera. And you can skip those numbers, remove fields, um, uh, and have different versions of, um, uh, of uh, messages that, um, that are backwards compatible. So that, one, that one's just a, a message, that's just the data. Um, to make gRPC work, it needs um, a, a full uh, interface description language. So here's something, um, here's a very basic, uh, you know, hello world type um, service and uh, so he, the, there's this little extra bit of protobuf um, that defines a service that has a particular RPC call called say hello as a request and returns a, uh, a reply. And then the requests, that request and reply are just messages. And um, yeah, um, that, you know, def that defines a very simple um, uh, yeah, remote procedure call. And the idea is that a client would um, a client and server side would um, use these files uh, to describe um, this RPC. The, the, the libraries in those languages would 
generate native data structures from from this, and the client would uh, the the server the author then actually implements say hello, um, and then the client can call that. Um, there's, uh, as I alluded to earlier, there's not just simple request response like on line two here. There's also streaming. So in this case, um, someone could, you can call, a client can call this lots of replies uh, method and uh, rather than just getting a single uh, result and get a stream of results pot uh, potentially indefinitely. Um, the reverse is also possible. The client can stream uh, requests to the server and then we can have full bi-directional streaming as well too. Um, so yeah, very much sort of a, a, an asynchronous kind of setup there where we're streaming requests at the same time as we're, restri uh, we're streaming responses. So on the server side, uh, as I mentioned, a gRPC library needs to generate a codec um, from the uh, .proto file, turn that into a native data structure. Then it needs to implement those services. Um, set up to listen on a particular HTTP, HTTP port um, and um, away you go. Um, something to note that uh, uh, also lends uh, itself to the uh, high performance is that the name of a service and the particular method are actually a, a HTTP path. So we can actually use load balance, a lot of off shelf things like load balances um, to route messages to particular backend services. Um, and I'm pretty sure uh, so a lot of the systems in the cloud native kind of area that, um, that use gRPC uh, um, exploit that fact. On the client side, we also generate a codec uh, and the, the, um, the library we use for the client will also generate um, stubs um, that uh, uh, methods or, or functions that we use to actually call the um, the client side of the remote procedure call. And yeah, we connect to a server via a channel and then um, yeah, the stubs then just look like any other functional method. And when we get to the demo, you can see that. So who's using gRPC? So I said um, it's popular in inter-service communication uh, and in that area it, it's an alternative it plays in the same space as um, rest apis graphql etc um, uh, having its origins in google of course it's heavily used in google for their apis and i believe more and more services in um, uh, in google uh, uh, implementing it um, heaps of other cloud native uh, uh, services and um, yeah, some yeah, some uh, applications are using it as their as their API. Like for instance, Cockroach DB, I believe, has a um, uh, a gRPC API that clients can use to connect. Um, and another area, and this is sort of relevant to my previous uh, uh, previous employment with Telstra, um, is that um, several of the big vendors like Cisco and Juniper are using um, gRPC for what they call model driven telemetry, which is um, uh, something they want to um, use to um, replace SNMP. So SNMP um, is used to monitor and manage networks. Um, it's a request response um, uh, uh, for, um, protocol, um, but it doesn't have streaming uh, and that sort of thing. So the, uh, yeah, Cisco and Juniper implementations take advantage of the streaming um, capabilities and the you know, much richer interfaces that they can develop in Protobuf with it. So here's the, uh, here's the Juniper, part of the Juniper um, Protobuf file. This is actually yeah, something that's available online. You can get this and it defines a whole bunch of uh, whole bunch of uh, RPC calls to uh, go out and subscribe to um, a particular network device, like a, a big router or whatever, sitting in a, in a data center somewhere. Um, and um, 
yeah, subscribe to uh, telemetry and telemetry being um, things like, you know, the traffic um, uh, uh, temperature of the, the and, C and CPU load and memory uh, uh, load of the, of the routers, numbers of customers, et cetera, et cetera. It um, goes on and on the number of, a number of routes and virtual, virtual routing tables, et cetera. All of that is accessible um, and can be subscribed to. And then, as you can see, uh, with this first one, subscribe to something. In this case, it's a, you know, um, a particular, particular service or particular sensor, quote unquote, on the device. And then we we get streamed back um, a whole bunch of data. And um, yeah, uh, Scott and Dennis, who are here, know all about that. Um, uh, how you know, how that works underneath. Uh, but yeah, the um, it's. Uh, the, the, the idea is that it's much higher performance than um, SNMP. Um, debatable in reality whether it is, but there we go. So that's that's one that's one use. And and um, at Telstra we wrote a, an Elixir based client against this service um, to um, to get all that telemetry. Another uh, example. Um, and this can be found on online um, uh, at that link it's a bit broken there but it is at the end of the uh, slides as well um, but um, yeah you know, this is an example of using grpc to build uh, yeah uh, another layer of um, of, um, of uh, messaging protocol on top um, that's a, that's fully asynchronous um, we won't necessarily go into the details here um, oh one thing uh, interesting thing to point out that we haven't seen yet is um, is this uh, the uh, uh, protobuf allows you to um, have you know uh, compound types here uh, union union types I should say it could be plain message or um, so it's the compressed uh, and that works really nicely um, in a pattern match language like Elixir which we'll get to so yeah this is pretty cool then. This relatively short blog post is uh, is an interesting read. So on to Elixir. So there is a, uh, as I said, an unofficial uh, but relatively mature um, gRPC library, um, and and it uses Gun and Cowboy um, for the client and server. And there's also a, yeah, a separate protobuf library. There are some competing protobuf libraries in, um, in, in Elixir, uh, uh, but yeah, this is by the same author as the, as the gRPC library. And yeah, this is the stack that we used at Telstra. So um, that is pretty much it for slides. So I wanted to go over to the, uh, showing a demo of, uh, of, of a little, semi-complete application that I have written to show off uh, gRPC in Elixir. So uh, shout out if, this, if the font size is too small um, uh, and I can, I can adjust. But basically uh, what we do is um, grab our gRPC dependency and um, yeah, the, the, the author there uh, recommends uh, um, overriding the, um, the, the version of the cowboy library that we use. Um, compatibility goes back. We've been using this library since 1.6. So it's been around for a while and has, um, yeah, not sure where it is now, how far you can go back, but um, yeah, no, um, not too not not too much further than one six, I would say, even though I'm yeah using one eleven here. So uh, what we need to do to uh, create one of these uh, a gRPC application, of course, is first define the the service. So here is um, here's my uh, service that I've um, put together. So it's a, um, 
a, a chat application, which is kind of you know a, a kind of silly um, uh, application to um, to build you know in gRPC. Uh, it's not necessarily um, the the, um, uh, you know, the 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 best uh, example, but no, uh, it's uh, I chose uh, chat more because it's kind of obligatory with uh, beam based languages to write a to write some kind of a chat um, system. So we've got a few um, uh, RPC calls here, listing rooms, creating rooms, joining, leaving, sending a message. Um, and most of them request response except join room. So in join room, you join, and if you're successful in joining, you get a stream of um, room data come back. And then all of the, um, <clears throat> all, all of the uh, function, uh, all, all of the messages here are also uh, implemented below. You can see some use of choices here. So if you, this one here is um, success or an error. If you squint, that's kind of like the okay or error pattern that we used to seeing in Erlang and Elixir. And yeah, it maps fairly well into um, into gRPC land. Um, yeah, so yeah, build up a big service. You can modularize things, um, put them in multiple uh, files, uh, join them together, etc. So the Elixir library provides a plugin to a third party library called Proto C, um, Proto Buff Compiler. And this will, um, if I run this, it will convert our Proto Buff file into um, a set of Elixir modules. So um, I won't actually do that because I don't need to, but if you trust me that I did run it and I come over to here. So it produces um, a whole bunch of Elixir modules, um, all, all in, a, um, in a single file, but, um, but um, that's, that's okay. And all the types, So let's see, there's room there. And room is down here. So that's um, that's what um, the library spits out. There's there's room there. So name and description are strings. Um, and yeah, this is what it um, it produces um, a, as an output. So yeah. Um, Everything is struck to give it that just that extra little bit of type safety, and um, uh, then it yeah defines um, some fields. So the library itself yeah makes um, reasonable use of some macros um, there, but you don't need to worry about this um, this particular file. It's just good to uh, necessarily the completely automatically generated. But yeah, this is the this is what it produces, and then uh, down at the bottom it defines a service module with the RPC calls that we uh, wanted. And you can see this one here, the join room request is the one that's uh, one that's streaming. So, so far so good, we've generated this. Um, we then do some more um, boilerplate kind of stuff. Um, I've got some other things in my in my application, main application supervision tree, but yeah, basically to start one of these servers, we put, it's got a built-in supervisor library and we say um, uh, another, we pointed to another little bit of boilerplate-y stuff that we need to do at a port. Um, the endpoint is similar kind of to a, um, uh, the, some of the boilerplate in um, in Phoenix there, but yeah, um, 
at this point, hopefully we should have a, um, a server that um, is running on um, this port here. If we put that there. Um, <clears throat> so let's us have a look at the server. So um, define as uh, as many, uh, uh, sorry, we can um, we implement each of the RPC calls as functions um, uh, going from camel case into um, into uh, snake case. Um, the putting the specs in here, I believe, is how the li it, it, uh, how the library finds these um, which uh, which functions to use, and pr al almost all of them. Sorry, yeah, the, the, there's a, a common pr uh, sort of a common structure to the signature of these functions, a request, and then the gRPC stream, and then we go ahead and and do whatever we do we need to do to um, uh, to implement them. So that was uh, uh, this one here is create room. If I go back to uh, here, we've got create room up up here. So this is the part that we have to fill out. Um, and yeah, so ba basically um, in a chat application with multiple rooms, um, we've got um, something that supervises those rooms. Um, so uh, yeah, using uh, We'll go and have a look at that. Um, fairly simple, that uses dynamic supervisor. Don't um, um, don't kill me for that, Dennis. But um, yeah, uh, dynamic supervisors are you know fairly straightforward way of uh, in uh, of being able to dynamically uh, create. Um, OT, uh, you know, gen servers and um, have them supervised in a tree. So rooms can come and go. So we need something like that. At the moment, all I've got is a, uh, I've only implemented starting them, not, not removing them. Um, and again, a bit of uh, debug output that I shouldn't have had there. Um, and then um, the Um, to actually manage a room, just a, um, a fairly straightforward uh, gen server. Um, that's wrong. That uses the uses the registry. So um, yeah, just yeah, uh, because I could using a few of the the nice things in built into in, in OTP and um, in, in in Elixir um, specifically. The registry is really nice um, uh, rather than. Um, uh, dispatching gen server calls um, using a PID and having to look that up somewhere. Um, you know, in the past uh, years ago, when I was playing first playing with Erlang, I would have ETS tables with uh, PIDs in there, but um, the you know the registry just ha uh, hand handles all that. Um, and yeah, um, some. Uh, so yeah, in the you can think of this uh, uh, this particular gen server as kind of like the context um, in in like in Phoenix world. This is the application that we're um, that we're building, you know, independent of the interface. Uh, in this case, the interface happens to be um, gRPC, but potentially um, we could also use uh, 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 yeah, a GraphQL or a REST API or something, um, simple TCP, whatever. Um, so, yeah, um, I did break that um, that, in, uh, that isolation a bit with this uh, function here. Um, it has um, gRPC or protobuf stuff um, in it. Um, uh, I didn't abstract that away in time. Um, So over here, 
we can uh, run it. I've uh, uh, run it up here and um, yeah, also being very naughty, as you can see, I've got some um, unused variables. Uh, I might've even fixed them. Yeah, there you go. Just didn't recompile. Um, so I built a little, uh, oh, forgot half of it. Hmm. Show you the client. So pretend that everything I just showed you didn't exist and this chat service was actually written in Node.js or Go or Python or something like that. Um, this is what we need to um, uh, implement to uh, to talk to that in um, yeah, from an Elixir-based client. So um, we connect to our server. There's metadata and other things you can add in there. Um, and then, yeah, we um, basically call the, the stubs, build up the requests and call the stubs. Uh, and then, um, what, uh, yeah, passing in a um, passing in the channel, um, and yeah, I've just in, I, I've just implemented um, creating, joining, uh, and um, uh, sending messages. Uh, yeah, the some the yeah, other services like uh, RPC calls I didn't uh, didn't implement um, in in time for the this preso, but th this was enough. But yeah, so it's fairly straightforward to um, to um, to put something together. Um, the the library, the gRPC, sorry, the protobuf li uh, library in Elixir, um, yeah, has some um, good things in it to assist with creating these you know, request and response um, uh, structs. So yeah, there's a very uh, there's something very simple that will you know will work in IEX. So yeah. So I'll make sure I've alias that, which I should have. Yeah, so we get ourselves a, a, a channel and you can see um, uh, by running it in IEX, we can see behind the curtain a bit there. Um, the, um, yeah, it, it's um, yeah, calling out to gun to, um, to do its thing. Uh, you can implement your own codex. Um, um, if, if you want to um, uh, use, you can in gRPC use a different um, Y format. You don't have to use protobuf, um, although I haven't had an experience doing it otherwise. And then information about the, um, the connection. There is, um, yeah, you can do use SSL um, and um, uh, yeah, client and server authentication there, but in this case, I haven't. And there's also middleware in the form of interceptors where you can intercept calls and do things in one of the services that we wrote using gRPC Telstra. We use that for interceptors to make sure that all the requests were authenticated. All right, so now that we have the channel, create a room. Mm -hmm. What's going on here? That's very good. Demo gods are not smiling on me today. See if I can work, get it to work this time. There we go. So we've got a room created. Um, we can join. And now this would obviously be on different different uh, machines, could be on different machines or whatever, but I'll join the same chat room as, uh, as a different user. Um, and then I can, as one user, I can send a message somewhere in my history. There we go. 
Um, so yeah, sending message hi there to from user two to um, that room, and there's um, uh, the uh, because user one and two are both um, in the same IAX session, I get the result twice. Um, I'm just doing an, an IO inspect of the data to see what the, the data looks, the data structure looks like. Um, but you know, in a real application, of course, we would extract that and probably with a, a real time stamp and the, the handle and put it into a nice pretty UI um, in, in, in some way, shape or form. So, um, and the, uh, the main thing to note here is that the join um, join room actually sets up a, um, a stream um, to return um, data asynchronously. So um, the say that again. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's a little bit tricky, um, but uh, to uh, to set up a, uh, the beam to the rescue. I'll go back to the oh sorry, wrong thing. So um, on the client side, um, this join room uh, is the is one of the streaming. Um, is the, yeah, is the streaming core. And so we're not just getting an answer back, we're getting a potentially never ending stream of data. Um, so what we, um, what we do in this case is we, um, um, we've, got to, we've got to manage that stream somewhere um, and you know, keep it around. And uh, unfortunately, uh, I don't know the reason for this, uh, but um, uh, the, um, the stream object that we get back from gRPC um, uh, has to be uh, managed in a in a separate process. So we do that um, outside of um, just doing something basic, not not using OTP, just spawning a um, uh, a process that um, creates the request to join a a particular room. It when it calls the stub, it gets back a stream rather than a um, uh, rather than a a, 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 a single um, singleton response, and then um, we um, we just loop loop over that stream and process all the messages. And in on each block, so this receive function will never should never uh, end until the stream uh, errors out or the channel error, error errors out. So the yeah receive will never. Um, Will, will never end in this blocks. And, and that's another reason why needed in a separate process. Um, so yeah, that's, um, that, that's pretty nice. Um, a little bit of, um, yeah, a, a little bit of low, lower level uh, stuff to do. And it's not really sort of clearly documented um, that this is what you need to do, but yeah, uh, someone smarter than me, okay, Dennis figured that out. And um, um, Dennis being one of my other colleagues from Telstra, uh, and uh, yeah, that this is this is how you do it. Similarly, on the server side, so we have this module, the chat server, um, which has got all these implementations uh, of the the RPC calls. Every time they're called, um, uh, every 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 invocation um, spawns a um, a beam process. Um, so it's one. Um, uh, one beam process blocking somewhere in, in its implementation in the body of one of these functions is not going to cause the, the whole thing to block as far as far as I um, uh, as far as I can tell um, we um, um, yeah the, the, there's no there's no downside so when we join a room and we have to re return that stream um, in, you know, the indefinite stream of, uh, of you know, chat messages from other users back, um, back down to each client, um, we, can, we can just loop forever in, inside this um, invocation and it won't affect any other clients or any other, um, 
any other part of the server. Uh, and in the in the loop, it's a very simple receive block, and it you know has you know probably you know uh, many performance uh, bugs in it because there's no timeout, etc. Um, but the, um, the idea here is that um, we, uh, as, as users send messages to our gen server, the gen server will send it back. Uh, and the gen server is going to be sitting in another process. It sends it back to um, uh, the uh, back to this. Um, uh, this particular process that's um, running our uh, join room request and we just block, get a message. And then if you have a handle on that gRPC stream, you can send replies asynchronously and then you just loop. And if we get something we don't, we're not interested in, um, we just loop there. So this, this assumes that uh, whatever, um, Whatever process is really running this um, uh, this instance, this module, is not not interested in other methods, um, uh, other messages. But I believe that's the case as well too. Um, so again, a little bit of lower level trickery. If you're just doing sort of plain basic Phoenix kind of work in Elixir, you may, you may not have to worry about this stuff because it's all um, the, the similar kinds of problems in Phoenix land would be abstracted away in the in the library so that you don't have to worry about um, you know, lower level process stuff or or even really OTP stuff um, which is yeah kind of nice but it's good to it, it's good to know about the stuff and be familiar with it um, so that when you do need to do it you've got something to fall back on um, oh yeah So when um, the users join the room, um, they uh, uh, we just store in, in the in the room state that particular user and the the process ID of the of the the, the particular invocation of our server module um, and then when people send a message, build up the, the, res the response we need um, and send, uh, send it out to all the, all the users. And yeah, using process send again at uh, something slightly, slightly low level. Um, and yeah, this um, keeps the, for yeah, fortunately, we can have multiple invocations of this, uh, multiple processes, right? All, all uh, serving this server, so we can um, we don't have to have this gen server know anything. I could, you know, could refactor this and send something more abstract. Um, it, would, it, it doesn't need to know anything about gRPC. It doesn't need, it just needs to know that there is a PID somewhere that wants to know about, um, yeah, messages when. Um, uh, when, when a message is received, um, yes, yeah, so that's a, that, that's a, that's about it. Um, hopefully, that sort of makes sense in how it can be used and how you know if you squint, it kind of looks similar to other um, other things out there like you know RESTful APIs or um, uh, yeah GraphQL etc. You know, same but different kind of thing. Um, yeah, happy to uh, go through the code. You know, any particular things in the code? If, uh, if, um, after uh, I I finish, and yes, yeah, so I will quickly wrap up. It's been draining on. So yeah, just you know, put some uh, links in there. Um, stole uh, stuff from the gRPC website. This is the the library. Um, there's a blog post came out this year, which is, you know, a much, probably much better written um, and gentler introduction um, to using um, gRPC and Elixir. The asynchronous uh, uh, use case is um, 
uh, based on Dennis's blog post here, um, which I recommend reading and and others uh, as well. And yeah, we found that this tool, GRP, GRP curl, which is the GRPC equivalent of curl, very useful for debugging. Um, yes, and so again, apologies for not um, showing an uh, the, uh, this app working, interoperating with something written in another language. It is my intention to, to, um, to do that. And I can either do another talk or at the very least republish that and let everyone in the meetup know about that. And oh, bef yeah, before I open to questions, uh, yeah, a shout out to, to Dennis. Um, uh, everything I know about GRPC, he taught me. So um, yeah, kudos to him. All right, thanks very much. Awesome, thanks so much, Rob. That was great. Has anyone got any, uh, any questions for Rob? Yeah, I just had a bit of a question. Yeah, sure. Hey, Rob, how are you? Hey. Um, GRPC versus distributed Erlang and process groups. If, it, if you had uh, some, you know, private backend service to service communication, when would you reach for GRPC versus um, using the sort of beam built in distributed messaging? Um, I, um, think if there's um, the, if there's a chance that you need to have other languages in there um, that's um, that, um, that's a you know, sort of a, a, a tick in, in favor of, of, of grpc um, possibly if the um, uh, network reliability is yeah not great uh but yeah i think if you if everything's beam and it's sort of on a reasonably you know, reliable network so using something like swarm or whatever would be i reckon would be uh a lot better um yeah it's i think it really it shines when you've got you know you're not in control of the of one side if you're um yeah if you're implement, like like we were with our um with our grpc collector for the for the telemetry if we were you know we're um you know we're talking to devices we have no control over so that's um you know and they're you know not in this they're certainly not implemented in erlang um even the even the ericsson ones probably wouldn't be um uh or elixir um so yeah that the, there's that case um but yeah as um um as we have found out the there's a lot of advantages if you can stay with uh like erlang terms uh there's a lot of efficiencies there you, know, you don't need yeah you know, the parsing and that sort of thing you don't the all, all that goes out the window so yeah if you if you can um if you've got a proper you know beam cluster then go with that um if you've got yeah a broad ecosystem um uh, yeah maybe there and um yeah, even if it's all Elixir or, uh, yeah, if you think that maybe you'll want to expose it to some other systems, it might be a, a choice you make. Um, and I guess maybe the H2 stuff, yeah, routing, et cetera, um, that's probably with the async uh, messaging protocol, that was probably a big thing there is that you can, um, you can use off the shelf load balances like Nginx or whatever, well, yeah, using nginx in that in that way um, to route um, uh, route uh, uh, requests to different backends based on the name of the service and the path, etc. So, yeah, a roundabout way of saying it depends, right? Of course. <laughs> Thanks. Any I have questions? another question, oh, sorry, Robert. Thanks for the talk. Um, what about the, the security? How are you working with that? Uh, I mean, especially for this implementation of gRPC in Elixir, mm -hmm. uh, how is working there? Yeah, so good question. Um, yeah, there. Uh, 
you can use um, both client and server side authentication. So um, there is um, uh, there is the ability to uh, to load in a um, a root CA. Um, I just didn't I didn't sh uh, show that, but um, uh, let's see. Um, I'm not sure if it's on the main page. Um, Yeah, so it definitely says it um, uses um, yeah authentication with TLS, and yeah, you can use both uh, yeah, have both client and um, server um, uh, en encryption with that, and um, the your gRPC itself uh, you know does have that pl pluggable authentication, but you can um, yeah you can not necessarily roll your own crypto, but you can um, you can. Ha uh, um, Implement all um, authentication in um, various different ways. So, with each, um, you can intercept uh, requests. Uh, the, there's a uh, which is like a middleware, and you can, uh, for instance, enforce that a particular uh, you know a to there's a token and a header, and that's what we that's what we did. So our gRPC server um, for for one of our um, you know uh, one of our projects. It um, yeah generated a a, a token um, and returned that to the um, to the client and the you know the client um, in that case was was going to be a Python program and that yeah that it was up to the Python program to continually return that token with subsequent requests in a particular header uh, yeah the, the, I believe in some of the more main in some of the official libraries the, there's more there's more sort of, uh, um, I guess, clear, uh, clear cut authentication mechanisms. There's, um, yeah, there's a lot, a lot to gRPC if you, if you, um, yeah, look under the, under the covers and uh, yeah, even, you know, working with it for two years only sort of scratch the surface really on, on that, that kind of stuff. But yeah, it's definitely possible to have, yeah, uh, client and server side encryption, uh, password authentication, etc. And so for instance, the, um, the telemetry project, uh, which is a you know a yet another um, on the with the Juniper devices, the they provide a the that telemetry uh, service that I showed with you know, subscribing, um, but prior to that, you you can optionally um, hit an authentication or turn on an authentication API, which is like a different endpoint, um, and yeah, username password authentication there and then but that's up to the the device vendor or, or the the network engineers who are running or uh, managing those devices to turn that kind of stuff on but it, it is yeah a certain level of you know of uh security is definitely definitely possible thanks no worries